Hello, Kaikus here, finally. Ugh, it's been a while since the last video, not gonna lie. Last time I released Ruins of Albion, my three month university project on Steam. And I want to quickly thank everybody who tried it out because currently it has more than 27,000 downloads and a lot of positive reviews. Never thought that so many people are going to play it, but yeah, really nice. So after the release of Ruins of Albion, my overall progress was Ascendum, nearly finished, Mendasium, more in concept than actually done, and Ruins of Albion, finished and released. Looking at this, the most logical project to prioritize here is of course a completely new game since I need the bachelor project for my university. There is no given theme or genre, the only thing the game has to do is to focus on programming in some way since I am in games programming course and there should be around 300 hours of pure programming in the final project. Procedural generation I already did with Ruins of Albion so that's not really an option here. So I picked something that I always wanted to do and try out and that's procedural yeah. animation. And by that I mean spiders and multi-legged creatures that can walk on anything using a combination of inverse kinematics and code. In my head I was picturing a procedurally animated player climbing on a big procedurally animated enemy which was enough to make me motivate. Sadly procedural animation is not a genre and it's nearly a mechanic, so what is the game exactly? Well I thought since in this project I will be focusing on code and not on design, not on design. Not on design. I might just make a satisfying combat game with some enemies so that I don't have to spend that much time on level design. I started by setting up the inverse kinematics for one single leg. There is not much to explain here how I did it because I was browsing YouTube and <laughs> link in the description if you are interested. Then I made a controller class that is going to handle the target positions for every leg using ray casts and move the legs when they are too far away. The biggest hack for making a believable walk cycle is to hard code which leg goes first otherwise the creature will look kinda weird. Procedural animation wasn't really done at all however I just moved to art like I always do since I cannot work on the project when it looks like garbage. After quite sophisticated analysis of possible art styles and modeling techniques I chose Unity post-processing art direction. Living by the quote, you cannot see garbage if you cannot see clearly, I just added dense fog, weak lighting, ambient occlusion, bloom and color correction and I got this nice atmosphere which was literally made by spheres from Unity. And while we were there I also added some air particles using circles and some push rain which all kinda ended up looking like some organic cyberpunk. Back to the procedural animation. I was really happy how good the algorithm worked and that was mainly because I decided to put the ray casts from the top of the character so that the controller can easily find the next leg position on the wall. Since that wasn't working at all I made the ray cast shoot on an angle and now the character can literally go anywhere. Then I quickly added a dash because having a dash in the game is always nice. After quickly adding a shooting mechanic that can make you motion sick and vomit after one minute of playing, I moved on to the enemies. And that's where everything went to shit. How am I handling enemy pathfinding since one provided by Unity doesn't support walking on walls or ceilings? No pathfinding means no enemy. No enemies means no different types in procedural animation. And that was the whole point of the project. Who would have thought that the combat requires fast reactions and movement and procedural animation cannot handle that without some serious performance issues? I have no idea how to stick the player to a moving object which means no moving platforms or climbing enemies. Dash is breaking the game and I don't even know why I wanted to add it in the first place. Shooting and aiming makes you vomit, there is no story and no meaning. So at this point I spent more than a month on this and it's not going anywhere. So the most logical thing is to start reworking everything. That means scrap the dash, scrap the shooting and aiming and remove the combat completely. And what is the combat game without the combat you might ask? Well I don't know but I was just going with it. So now instead of shooting the player can plant bombs on the ground and detonate them. With that I made some destructible blobs that you can only destroy from a special weak point which should force the player to parkour to some interesting place. Then I made made some buttons and switches because I couldn't think of anything else that a player can do and now you have to figure out how to get to places, activate objects with switches and buttons. <laughs> I think I smell a puzzle game. No, 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 no. Focusing on code and not on design. Not on design. Not on design. 
The biggest question in my case is how to limit the player, since the controller can literally go anywhere. And it would be quite funny if I just placed a door somewhere just so that the player can crawl over it. That means I will probably have to make the game indoors instead of outside, which I don't really like because I want to make a little world map. So the solution I found was to just add water and the player is not able to swim. As for the bombs, I also tried to add new bomb types, like this directional bomb that shoots upwards, so that you have to do some puzzly positioning to activate a switch or something. I was thinking that throughout the game you can unlock new bomb types and also increase the amount of bombs that you can place at the same time. This implies that the game will have a progression system, and because I like maps so much, I will also have a map. So the game is a puzzle metroidvania now. Never expected that, but here we are. For the map, I started creating little puzzle areas that I'm going to combine later. I of course marked where the puzzle starts and ends, as well as the optional exits, because this is a metroidvania after all, and your journey should not be completely linear. The thing with puzzles is that they're kinda hard to do and take a lot of time, so I kinda got bored really fast, which means that I focused on other important stuff in the project. like. A smooth cinematic camera so that I can show what the player did with the switch or a button. The biggest hack in my life, just add these black lines that kinda change the aspect ratio of the screen and you will have a nice cinematic effect, which in fact also tells the player when he is allowed to move. I also made these code based wires that are going to show what is activated since I don't want to use the cinematic camera for everything. It's actually quite simple, here is the script if you are interested how I made it. The trick is to have a material with a texture, something like this, so that you can offset it with the code and make it look like some kind of electricity is passing through. I also worked on graphics a little bit more, so now the water looks much much better than it used to. I added veins everywhere to add some more detail, as well as hanging thingies from all of the blobs and stuff in the air. I also updated the destructible blobs, so they look much more organic right now. The player also has 6 legs now instead of 4, because it looks much much cooler with the procedural animation. And I added some organic terrain to really showcase that the player can walk on anything. Then I did the dialogue system, and I know, I know, this is a 4 month bachelor project, so I will not have actual dialogue, but I wanted to add some lore here and there so that you can kinda read it. And speaking about the lore, I figured out the meaning and the story of the game. Since the game already looks organic to showcase procedural animations, the map might as well be a living organism. With that in mind, I made an intro cutscene and tutorial area because I felt inspired. Sometimes I really surprise myself how I can go and make an intro cutscene and there is not a single level that is playable in the game. And then, because I started having trouble making good puzzles, like who would have thought that having a switch and a button as your only puzzle elements in the game does not spark any puzzle ideas besides clicking something and opening something. So I added some new ones, like this activator place where you have to stand to activate something. In this case you can also leave a bomb or stand on it. Or this hanging thingy that you have to shoot with a directional bomb so that it falls down and serves as a bridge or a platform. However, that didn't quite help because I actually realized that I was still not able to make cool puzzles and that's because my actual bomb mechanics suck. You can place bombs whenever you want and detonate them whenever you want. The only drawback is that they will detonate in sequence, you place them. I wasn't really happy with that, so here's hopefully the final version. Till next time. The player can place a bomb, but you can only detonate it when you are in range. This adds more potential puzzle problems, since you have to think about the range as well. Then I didn't like how the player can just place and detonate the bomb instantly, so now you have to be a little farther away for you to detonate the bomb. The bombs now have this link to the player showing that they can be detonated, and when you go outside of the range they will be grayed out. This is all nice and stuff with one bomb, but when you have two or more the bombs themselves can connect to each other meaning that you can extend your potential range quite a lot. Not just that, but the sequence explosions are still there, but now they are more strategic, since your position now determines which bomb is going to go off first. And finally, all of these links everywhere kinda look like a web, which makes a lot of sense since the player is some kind of a spider. With the new bomb mechanics, I was also able to make some cool puzzles and I already started constructing the map out of 
with all of the problems, it seems that I kinda neglected the actual focus of procedural animation, which is not the best thing ever for my future mark in university. So I added the feature where you switch the player model when switching a bomb type. In this way, I can showcase more walk cycles and you can switch through them and change your walk cycle on any surface as well. So I guess that's kinda impressive. I mean, for now, they all kinda look the same, but hopefully they will look different from each other in the future. The actual goal of the game is to play with these system strength percentages since whenever you activate one of these big points you will reduce it a little so imagine the world changing a little bit here and there and some parts only opening at a certain percentage i said that you can play with percentages because i was also thinking about an option to increase it and not just reduce it but we will see I still want to add some enemies, because I really like the idea of climbing a big enemy, but they will probably be quite limiting since I don't want to spend like 5 years of writing and optimizing my own specific pathfinding algorithm. I'm quite surprised and excited where the project is going, since having a map allows me to add a lot of secrets and optional stuff. I of course had to make a locked door system, but in my case somewhere in the world you will find this weird thingy, but then if you manage to find the key somewhere else in the world, you can come back here and then insert the key and open another area. I still need a fast travel system since it kinda takes some time to go from one place to another, but I will do that for the next devlog. I think there will be one or two more devlogs for this game before my university deadline on 23rd of February, so we will see. I'm also planning to release this game as well on Steam, so yeah, looking forward to something, I guess, if you're interested. It's sad that I didn't have much time in the past couple of months, which is the reason why this video is so late. I saw all of the comments already on all of my other videos asking for tutorials and I hope that the year 2022 will be more generous and I will have more time for everything especially when I finish this project but I think I'm done happy new year everybody and till next time